I, I would like to also share uh, a little bit of a personal, I, uh, when Eric asked me whether I wanted to speak on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, today for just five minutes, I was, I was a bit hesitant, but uh, um, I told him I would, because I think uh, for me, I, 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 I wasn't sure what I would speak about for prayer. Uh, um, I was, um, you know, as a person who's received a lot of prayer, and a person who's not prayed so much, I was like, uh, I'm a completely, uh, you know, it, the, 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 the equation of being prayed for and praying for somebody else is completely lopsided for me. Uh, a lot more people are praying for me than I am praying for. And I felt a little bit anxious that, you know, I have to admit that uh, to myself and to God. And uh, I didn't, I didn't want to do that, and uh, so that that brought some anxiety about prayer. But then I thought to myself, uh, I have seen prayer for me, you know, my own parents, my grandparents, uh, people I don't know very well, uh, all the uh, ladies and gentlemen who I barely met, and yet every time I met them, maybe once in two years, they would tell me that they're praying for me. And I was shocked by that. Uh, my parents and my grandparents, I understand. But, uh, you know, and that was a great pleasure. And I'm still receiving so many prayer, prayer in my life, my job, and risks involved. And it was great. But then I thought to myself, who, who do I have the responsibility to pray for? Uh, where, where I have the responsibility to pray for others as I do. And, uh, as a base, I, I could think of only a few people. Um, I, yeah, of course, I, I had thought of a lot of people, but uh, to me, the most critical uh, were my kids. And so I, I, I wanted to just uh, read two verses, um, uh, uh, two verses for, uh, for, for in connection with that. First Chronicles 29, verse 19. And give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion to keep your commands, statutes, and decrees, and to do everything to build the palatial structure for which I have provided. And in this verse, we see that David, uh, this was one small part of a big prayer he had when he had just prepared all the materials required to build the first temple in Israel. And he, he, he had prepared everything, but he knew he wouldn't be able to do it himself. And he, God had told him that you can't build my temple. But he wanted his son to do it uh, for him, Solomon. And uh, this was his prayer for his son, that he could keep God's commands and statutes and decrees. So David really wanted the best for his son. And he wanted his son to accomplish God's purposes. And I think that is one of the things I pray, pray for my, my kids, um, that they can accomplish God's task and they can accomplish his will. You know, every time I pray, I pray, dear God, help me and help all those around me to, to do his will. Because sometimes I think we can be a little bit selfish in the things that we want. And even for others, we're like, if only that person could get that thing, so then they will feel successful. Yes, you're not being selfish by yourself, but maybe that is not the will of God. Um, so same thing. I pray for God to lead my kids in, in the way that they are supposed to live. And, uh, so, and, then the second, and then the second verse is a little bit more scary. Um, Job 1.5. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job made arrangements for them to be purified. That's he's talking about his children. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And this was his regular custom. So here's another aspect about praying for your children. We need to intercede for our kids. Sometimes, you know, we have been kids too. And we know all the stupid things that we have done and all the things that we have done that disrespects and dishonors God. And our ch children will also do those things, you know, and our children will do things that we might not approve of, that God does not approve of. And we need to pray for them. 
We need to pray that God forgives them. Um, obviously, we can't bring uh, or guarantee our kids' salvation by, by our prayer. But still, that does not absolve us to the, of the responsibility to pray for them. Pray for that their successes and pray for God to forgive them through their failures. And uh, this is just an encouragement to you. And this I'm talking just because I have received so much of this kind of prayer. God, uh, my grandmother and my mother and all my, uh, have prayed that I, that God forgives me for all my sins that I do. And they have, and all, everybody has prayed for my success in my career and, you know, in my future. And these are the things that I would like prayer for. And I thank God for it. And I thank all those who have prayed for me. And I think it is my responsibility and all of our responsibility to pray for those who are younger than us, those that who look up to us. Uh, it could be your own kids or it could be those who look up to you as mentors and teachers. Pray for them. And uh, yeah, thank you. And now I'd like to uh, hand over to Jess. Thank you, Pastor. 